Okay, we are at the Benton Hall Academy School Garden. Uh, it is mid-June and everything is doing really well here. Uh, caretaker and designer of this garden, Wade Archer. Wade, how you doing? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> Why don't you tell us um, what your inspiration was for, for this school garden? Well, I wanted to demonstrate a low maintenance but high yielding, high producing um, vegetable and fruit garden that would integrate uh, perennials as well as annual um, crops um, on a small scale to be able to show, okay, if I've got this much space, what can I do? Can I, um, you know, only grow tomatoes? I, I think that's kind of what's this, uh, uh, I don't know, major paradigm we're working with. Vegetables are this and I can only grow them as such. So I'm experimenting and trying different ways of, of growing some food uh, that come out of uh, several wisdom traditions so that way I can actually teach my students okay on a small space I can actually grow carbs proteins fats um, and fruits and vegetables so um, on a small scale grow a full diet mm -hmm. um, that could then hopefully be um, scale scalable up to a few acres or even a farm Right, and so you're also thinking of this as an outdoor classroom? Uh, uh, we'll be building an outdoor classroom uh, right over here in this uh, open space, as you can see, uh, this fall. So it'll be a teaching space that will then lead out into the garden for uh, science and experiments. Cool, so tell me about these beds that you've got designed here, this kind of uh, non-traditional way that people are normally used to seeing them. Um, when someone first told me about uh, no tilling or, um, the, you know, very you know small amount of soil disturbance I didn't I didn't really believe it because the you know for about the last 12,000 years civilization is we've picked certain seeds that we eat you know the grains wheat corn uh, rice these other things are our annual seeds and we have to destroy usually the environment and then replace that environment with those seeds and then they grow up and we get that harvest but here um, I did a method um, that comes out of a permaculture tradition, which is uh, you suppress uh, by mulch um, the ground and dig anything that really is really terrible out, but then bring in uh, compost and other organic matter to build up the soil. So instead of digging down and uh, trying to get into the subsoil to get the nutrients out, I'm relying on the soil biology to actually um, bring the fertility there. Uh, Dr. Elaine Ingram, who's out of the Rodale Institute, has, has shown with her research that if you provide food for the soil, organic matter, and you leave it undisturbed uh, as much as possible, you can grow a large amount of food um, and you don't have to degrade and erode the soil so bad as when you have tillage. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see on these three beds, I built them up and then I have them uh, continually mulched so that way um, keep in the moisture and um, when I plant things or I, I cut them off at the base and I don't pull out the roots so that way mm -hmm. the, the roots as they decay um, that's still giving food to organisms as I put other plants in. right what's what's going on with the shape of the beds why are they shaped the way they're they are um, they're shaped what we call on contour in a uh, swale and berm system. Man. We can go closer and it's easier to see. So this is our first vegetable bed. Um, and on contour means it's a line of the exact same elevation. So this line here, as you can see these wood chips, this is all at the exact same elevation. Just like if you spill milk on top of a table or any other liquid, it slows down and spreads out. So as the water comes down, the high point of the garden is up there. As the water comes down um, the watershed here, it slows down and sinks in right next to my vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, and I dug a six to eight inch um, irrigation ditch basically called a swale. And then I filled it with wood chips and that wood chips uh, provides a great place for uh, fungus and other beneficial organisms to live as well as it really catches and holds that water so if you pull back my mulch in any of these Let's gardens 
Um, here's a good spot. You can see. Look at that. It's black. I've got black dirt and it's moist and it hasn't rained for several days. Mm -hmm. So by keeping things continually covered. Look at all that, that mycelium in there. Like oh my lord, yeah. Yeah, just so much. Mm -hmm. um, Focusing on that though, yeah. So much mycelium. Um, and um, for those who don't know, um, you want a balance. Most of our uh, food growing crops, annual crops like this, they like a balance between the prairie, highly bacteri bacterial um, dominated soils, and the forest, which is highly fungal dominated. So when you have something that's mowed like this for over 20 years, grass, right? This allows, uh, this is a highly bacteria soil um, where the bacteria is dominant. But by adding in uh, wood chips and other places like this and keeping the soil as the least amount of disturbed as possible, it allows for the fungal networks to grow. And this actually will spread water. They will transport water throughout the bed mm -hmm. next to the vegetable roots um, and will uh, keep the biological life very, very healthy. So um, that's great. I've been pleased. Everything looks good. So tell me about this bed. This bed is a annual production of protein and carbs um, that is mimicking nature. In, seed, in nature, we have seeds on trees and other plants and they fall on the ground. So we don't dig up the soil and then replace it with something else, they just fall. So here, I just cast these black turtle beans. You can see they're growing up pretty vigorously. Mm -hmm. In on top of the, the prepared soil I had with compost that I've mulched previously to a suppress lot of mulch, the weeds. That's great. And then I let this grow up, and as this grows up and matures, I'm going to throw buckwheat seed into here, just like if it was dropping on the ground from its plant, and it will grow up. And then in the, for the winter cover crop, I'm going to throw down, cast into the buckwheat, um, crimson clover, and winter rye. And this is going to grow up and give us a, this is our uh, carbohydrates, and we have protein here. Mm -hmm. Then add, that's going to grow over the winter, and back in the spring, I'm going to throw in black turtle beans. And you're that, not you're not digging up the soil in between each time. It, I'm just throwing down seed and harvesting. Right. And this is mimicking nature's um, just throwing seed on the ground and germination. And the wonderful thing about these black beans is they're a dicot, and they have a huge taproot, so they really could dig on the soil. Mm -hmm. You don't have to bury them. I just threw them on top of the ground, put a little straw on top, and there we go. There you go. That, that's awesome. Looks like you're doing some really revolutionary stuff here. Thank you, Wade, for showing us your Benton Hall Academy School Garden. Yeah, thank you for coming.